Right, I'm going to make this video now because I tried to put it on the other channel, but phew, I tried about two times to, I made two videos about 15 minutes long and it wouldn't let me upload. It said kept on saying error or some bullshit like that. So I've to do it a third time on here. So I'll be um, putting a link on my old channel for you to come here. So if you come over from my other channel, um, Welcome to my new channel. Well, it's a backup one, really. Um, just so I can have a talk about things. So I'll try and say again what I said on the other two videos. All right. I want you to all join in with me, and, and um, I've got a little project I want you to all consider in this current climate. Now, we've all been in lockdown for, uh, I don't know, what, four weeks is it? Five weeks, whatever. And we all like to, we would like to get out because it's, you know, it's summer, it's nice outside, the weather's improving, the temperature's getting higher, the sun's out. And um, there's lots of people locked in tower blocks with no balcony, no garden, and they can only open a window a little bit. It must be, poor. Oh, it must be tough on some of these families, so I can tell you that, and I am thinking about them. You know, those towers are blocks in London and Birmingham and Manchester. You've know, got families in there, dogs, pets. I don't know, it's just, it must be awful. Uh, and tomorrow, it's suspected that Boris is going to say, you can go out, you can go out. Uh, but you'll have to stay six feet apart and wear a mask. Now, I've already spoke about this. Um, I wore a mask from my place to the bus stop the other morning. The sun was out. Uh, by the time I got there, I had to pull it down because it was difficult, you know, it's, it's difficult to breathe. So you can imagine. So they're going to open up B&Q and all these garden places, which is great. But you're going to be stood outside in the sun in a queue. And there's going to be a big queue. Um, big queue at B&Q. With a mask on. And, you know, some people are going to be waiting hours. No. <laughs> I just don't think it's going to work, and I think uh, we could, you know, we could. Anyway, I'll get to the chase. I want everybody to stay at home. I don't want you to go out. I only want you to go to shop for essential items like cigarettes and alcohol. That's a joke, by the way. Um, you know what I mean? But I don't want you to. I don't want you to go out. I want you to. Stay at home, save lives, and protect the NHS. And let's flatten this curve together. Let's do it our way. And I think the best thing that everybody could do is stay at home and not go out. Now, the government are going to say that you can go out, which I just think that's coming from the goodness of the heart. And they feel bad for everybody and sorry for the kids, the children especially. It must be tugging at the heartstrings, that. You know, I've been locked up in the summer. And, and it's really kind of them to let us go out. It's fantastic. Obviously, you know, they want us to wear masks to protect everybody. You know, we understand. But as a community um, around the world, Australia, Peru, Germany, um, America, all over the world. I've not got that many subscribers, but they're all over the world. Well, not all over the world. They're on the world. All in it. Whatever. But I think we should all stand together and stay at home. And that way we can beat this. You understand what I'm saying? We can beat this if we all stay at home. And I'm asking you to ignore the very generous offer that the, that the governments are going to make to us around the world, and just say thank you. You must say you must be grateful for for, for, for their offer, um, you know, and give thanks because it is very kind and, it, and it's very thoughtful. However, I think we could best save the planet and save humanity by staying at home. And therefore, we, 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 you know, we negate the risk of a second peak 
because that's the potential of what could happen if we all get let out and you know you know the story so I think it would be great if everybody I know everybody's not going to hear this message but wouldn't it be great if say millions of people just millions decided to stay at home and protect lives and save the NHS protect the NHS and save lives I think that would be a duty for every man, woman and child. Um, and I think it would work. I think it would flatten the curve. You understand what I'm saying? Interesting. Well, let's say, for instance, everyone did do it and stayed in and the message did get around. What would happen then? Hey guys, if you refuse to go out, even the financial consequences and all the rest of it, just go to the shop for your essentials and just remain at home. What do you think would happen to phase two of this invisible, invisible enemy? As Mr. Trump said himself, it's invisible. Nobody can see it. It's out there. But no one can see it because it's invisible. So it's best to stay at home. I think you know where I'm coming from. Also, cycle lanes. Let's talk cycle lanes. I've noticed over the last 10 years, they're building them all over the place. Tons of them. Um, and I've noticed that they've built one from one town to another near me. No, I've never seen anybody cycle from this town to another town, ever. And it's a quite a fair distance, but this cycle path is huge. It's immensely wide. I thought it was going to be a new lane to ease the traffic, but oh no, it's a cycle lane. And I've seen another one from another village to another village, and I'm thinking to myself, who the fuck is going to ride from there to there and back again? They said it's not going to happen. And then they built another one, another long one, chopping down trees and building it. I'm thinking, I've still not seen anybody use these. Well, guess what? We've got a new transport minister. I can't remember his name, but he was on the television tonight on Sky News. Um, he looked like he was in Downing Street. Um, but I've never seen him in my life. Anyway, they're investing £2 billion into a new cycle and a new electric scooter infrastructure for transport. And they're investing £2 billion. And they're going to give people vouchers to go and fix up the old bike in his shed. They were his words. Get your old bike out. Take it off to Holford's and we'll give you a voucher and um, you can fix it up and you can get on your bike. Well, that's why all these cycle paths were made that nobody's been using. Well, there's your answer. They're going to be used now. So there'll be no more... <laughs> there won't be many cars on the road and if there are, they're going to be essential workers and you're going to have to show your papers and give you chips and pins, you know the score. So that'll be interesting. Um, especially for people who've got bad knees. Yeah, another one. Council estates. Now, some people are watching this in America and Peru and Australia and probably think, what the fuck's a council estate? It's a social housing um, enclave, encampment, community, whatever you want to call it. But I noticed when I was a kid, I thought, how come there's only one way in and one way out? One way in and one way out. So you drive in one road and you've got to go out the same road to come back out again. There's no other road to get out. And I thought, I was curious about that. I was kind of like stuck in my mind, thinking, fucking hell. So basically, the coppers have got you, do you know what I mean? But in the current climate, you think about it. A lot of these um, communities are working class. You know, they're, they're very colourful characters. You've got all sorts of people in there, and they're not easy to control. So I suppose they've had a bit of forethought it's easy to keep them in that community just by blocking that one road off. All you need is two cars and that's it. Nobody's going out of there. Nobody. So maybe, maybe just maybe, like I said, there was a bit of forethought in it. Who knows? Another idea I had 15 years ago about people's data, especially your children. I said to my friend, he's a computer geek, and I thought he would help me out. 
basically what I wanted, wanted to do was set up a website or whatever um, and find out whoever's had children in you know in the last year one year old children send them all an email and say look when your child is 13 or 14 they're gonna join Facebook and Facebook on their terms of policies says that all their data now belongs to them and what they do with that data is they sell it and make a shit load of money so over a, the lifetime of your child so therefore your child has now become a share so they've got a billion shares and now they've got a billion and one because your child has provided them with all the data that they needed to keep the company going because without people's data there is no facebook or these other sites like that do you know what I mean? There is none. It's all your data that's providing it. And also, you think you're on there, and they're providing you a service, but they're not. They're just giving you what you want. They're giving you what you say, what you think, what you talk about, what you search for. Everything comes right back at you. So they're not offering you a unique service, you know, at all. They're not giving you anything. All they're giving you back is what you're giving to them. The information and then they sell all this information to the and they sell it and they sell it and they sell it and they sell it so my idea was get everybody to sign up to this where i the company holds your child's data until a certain age when they want to join say facebook for instance so scenario say 10 million people joined up all right i'm just exaggerating but it's, it's the point i'm trying to make and they all got to the age where they were going to join Facebook. And then suddenly you get to that bit and you say, well, actually, no, we can't give you our charge data because it's been held by a holding company. And if you want it released, they're going to charge you $1,000 per child, which I think is a fucking snip, considering the amount of data they're going to get stolen off them for the next 80 years or whatever. And then they'd be fucked, wouldn't they? They would have to pay the money otherwise the whole thing would collapse because nobody would partake in it. A bit like stay at home. S save lives and protect the NHS. You know, you, you know where I'm coming from, just think about it. Now, if everybody stayed home, what would they say on the news the next day? Would they demand that you go out? Would they come and arrest you because you're not getting your daily exercise or just think about it, what would they do? And also, you better get ready for the food supply chain breaking down. Remember, this is England. It's a service industry economy. That's all we do. We don't, you know, produce much anymore. Everything gets shipped in, flown in, by train, by plane, by boat from China, Holland. We get lemons from Libya melons from Mumbai and coconuts from Copacabana you know what I'm saying but nothing comes in anymore no one's exporting anything no one's importing anything so it's all very well people saying oh well the warehouses are full well they might be and they might be the size of a football stadium but what about when they start getting empty where who's going to fill them up from where so then the queues will get bigger at these supermarkets the items will get fewer And there'd be less um, choice. And then that will just grow and grow and grow and grow. So you you can see that, you know, and also they're going to open B&Q and all these uh, uh, home-based stores and all the rest of it. That's great. And they're going to let you all out, which is great. Six foot apart, that's great. Mask, standing outside in the hot summer, waiting to go to B&Q. One in, one out. I don't think I could stand in the queue for now with a mask on, waiting to go and buy a bag of spanners or a bag of nails or some concrete to make an extension that's just wasting your time. Um, well, you know what I'm saying. Right. That's enough for now. Let's see if we can put this up. Um, thanks for listening. Like I say, a little disclaimer at the end of my video. Anything to say in my video is just my own thoughts my own personal thoughts, a bit of conjecture, a bit of subjectiveness, or whatever you want to call it. Um, don't take any advice I've given you. Do your own research and think for yourselves. Um, not asking to anyone to believe what I say or do what I say, just asking you to consider.
what I say. That's all. That's all. Um, oh yeah, there was a power outage in Utah and Idaho last night from 10.30 to about, about 11.45 at night. Um, there's nothing about it on the news, but I've got some subscribers from there, and they told me, uh, and they wasn't informed it was going to be an outage, and they wasn't told afterwards why there was one, and there's no news about it. It's probably just a what they call a shit test, just to see how people, you know, what, what happens when there's not an outage. You know what I mean? Um, that'll do for now. Peace out. <clears throat> Boom.